Kepler-90 is one of the most interesting exoplanet systems we've ever found. As of the time of making this video, it's the only known system to contain 8 planets other than the solar system. But unlike our system, where the planets are spread out over 30 AU, all 8 of Kepler-90's planets orbit within 1 AU of the star, which itself is 20% larger than the Sun. And not only that, but some of these planets are approaching the size of Jupiter, while others are similar in size to Earth. So, unlike other compact systems we know of, like the seven planet Trappist-1, Kepler-90 likely has both small rocky planets and large gas giants. So not only are all eight planets closer to their star than Earth is from the Sun, but all the planets are different from one another and have a wide range of sizes. So what are the planets of Kepler-90 like? With eight planets stuffed closer to the star than Earth, there must be something interesting going on. And could there be additional planets we haven't seen yet? Welcome to, coincidentally, episode 8 of my Grand Tour series, where I cover specific exoplanet systems in more depth. This episode will be about the 8-planet system of Kepler-90. When you're done watching this, make sure to check out the other episodes, including a Grand Tour of Alpha Centauri, Trappist-1, and 55 Cancri. Also be sure to suggest what other systems you want to see covered in the comments. As usual, we'll be going from the closest planet from the star to the furthest. Unfortunately, we know very little about the Kepler-90 planets, but coincidentally, we know more about them the further away we get from the star, so the last planets in this video will be the most interesting. Unfortunately, we don't currently know the masses of the majority of the Kepler-90 planets. However, we do know their diameters. This is because most of the planets were found with the transit method, where the planet passes in front of its star from our perspective. Depending on how much light the planet blocks, you can tell how wide it is, but transit says nothing about how massive the planet is. To figure that out, you need to use other methods, such as radial velocity or transit timing variations. But so far, this hasn't been done for Kepler-90, except for the two outer planets. But with that, the first planet in the system is Kepler-90b. Kepler-90b is about 30% wider than Earth and takes 7 days to orbit Kepler-90. What's interesting here is that unlike other compact systems, Kepler-90 is a large F-type star. If this was a red dwarf, a 7-day orbit wouldn't be that bad. But for Kepler-90b, orbiting a star 70% brighter than the Sun, way closer than Mercury orbits the Sun, probably isn't very fun. While we don't know its exact temperature, we can assume it's very hot, and probably tidally locked to Kepler-90, with a permanent day and night side. Because we only know its radius, we can't say what type of planet Kepler-90b is. However, given that it's only 30% wider than Earth, I've chosen to depict it as a rocky planet. This is very similar in radius to the exoplanet Kuakua, another hot exoplanet that we know is rocky. Unfortunately, we can't say anything about if Kepler-90b has an atmosphere or not, and that could become more or less likely whenever we find out its mass. Anyways, the next planet in the system is Kepler-90c, currently the smallest known planet in the system at about 18% wider than Earth. This radius makes it almost certain to be rocky, though again, without knowing the mass, that can't be said for certain. It takes a bit over 8.7 days to orbit Kepler-90, and is pretty close to B. All in all, Kepler-90c seems to be just a smaller, slightly cooler version of B. It's also probably tidally locked to Kepler-90, and also probably hot. Much the same can be said about Kepler-90i, the third and likely final known rocky planet in the system. It's somewhere around 32% wider than Earth, similar in size to Kepler-90b, and, though there's a lot of uncertainty, could be the biggest rocky planet in the system. It takes 14 days to orbit the star and is about a tenth of an AU away, still over three times closer to its star than Mercury is from the Sun. Colder than B and C, but still very hot, still probably tidally locked. Assuming no atmosphere, it has an equilibrium temperature similar to Venus at around 817 degrees Fahrenheit, or 436 Celsius. Though keep in mind that's an estimate and not an actual measurement, and the temperature will change based on whether or not it has an atmosphere and how reflective it is. I was the last planet discovered in the system, which is why it's called I instead of D. Speaking of which, Kepler-90d. It's three times further away from its star than I, at about 0.32 AU. Still closer than Mercury, but at least the distances are getting reasonable. Unlike the other planets before it, Kepler-90d is about 2.9 times wider than Earth, a size that almost certainly makes it a gas planet. For comparison, Neptune is about 3.9 times wider than Earth, and a planet that we know is a mini-Neptune, like Anipotia, is about 2.7 times wider than Earth. So, Kepler-90d is likely a small ice giant or mini-Neptune, with no solid surface. It's still close enough to its star to be very hot and potentially tidally locked. It takes 59 days to orbit Kepler-90, so again, we're getting to more reasonable numbers. Being likely an ice giant or mini-Neptune, we can't say much else about its environment. Everything about its atmosphere and environment remain a mystery for now. The same is true of Kepler-90e, the next planet. 
It takes 91 days to orbit Kepler-90 at a distance of 0.42 AU, the first planet outside the orbit of Mercury. It's slightly smaller than Deed, about 2.67 times wider than Earth, but that again makes it likely a mini-Neptune or ice giant. It might be far enough away for its star to not be tightly locked, though it's not known for certain. Unfortunately, this is the problem with most exoplanets. I talk about the planets we know a lot about on this channel, but for every planet we know something about, there's 10 we know nothing about except they exist. This is why I was hesitant to make a grand tour of Kepler-90 for a while. We know it has a lot of planets, but we know so little about each planet that I didn't think it would make for an interesting video. Luckily though, there's only one ice giant left to cover, and then we can get to the two planets with known masses and things get more interesting. Kepler-90f is the last ice giant or mini-Neptune in the system, similar in size to D. It's about 0.48 AU away from the star and takes 124 days to orbit it, the first planet with an orbital period of more than 100 days in the system. So, Kepler-90, despite being very different from our solar system, seems to fall into a similar pattern to our own. Smaller planets in the front, bigger in the back. So far, there have been likely three rocky planets and three likely ice giants, one after the other. And this pattern will continue for the last two planets in the system, the gas giants. These two planets are the most interesting of the system because we actually know their masses and can actually say interesting things about them. The masses of Kepler 90g and h were found using variations in their transits. Every time they transited in from the star, the timing of the transit was changed because of the gravitational effects of the other planet. Based on how large the variations in the transit were, we could figure out how big the planets were. And that's how we found out that Kepler-90g is about 15 Earth masses, similar in mass to Neptune, and Kepler-90h is about two-thirds the mass of Jupiter. Because we know both the mass and radius of these planets, we know their densities. And because of that, we know that Kepler-90g is a puffball planet. Kepler-90g is an extremely low density. Despite being less massive than Neptune, it's over twice Neptune's radius, eight times wider than Earth. I've made a video about puffball planets before, but if you haven't watched it, they're pretty weird. We expect them among hot Jupiters, where the heat causes their atmospheres to expand, but Kepler-90g isn't a hot Jupiter. It's about 0.71 AU away from the star, about the distance Venus is from the Sun, which, while that wouldn't make it hot, wouldn't cause the atmosphere puffing we see in hot Jupiters. Which raises the question of how a planet's atmosphere expands like this, causing the extremely low density, without heat. It's also a possibility, though, that Kepler-90g is a normal, non-puffball planet surrounded by a thick ring system that made the planet look bigger than it actually is. However, this is unlikely, as it would cause differences in the planet's transit we don't see. So, while not entirely ruled out, a ring system is unlikely as an explanation for Kepler-90g, indicating that's probably a puffball planet. For more information about these types of planets, watch my puffball planet video. But anyways, the transit variations of Kepler-90g seem to suggest it was orbited by an exomoon, though that was later found to be a false positive. Kepler-90h is the last known planet in the system. It's about 0.64 Jupiter masses, but almost identical to Jupiter in radius, suggesting another low density. It's in the habitable zone of Kepler-90, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist, and is almost exactly 1 AU away from a star on a 331-day orbit. Of course, Kepler-90h being a gas giant in the habitable zone raises the question of it hosting habitable moons. Because of its low mass, I would personally consider that unlikely, but that's speculation on my end and there's no actual evidence either way. But I have a video going in-depth about the chances of habitable moons if you want to know more. But with that, those are all the planets we know of in Kepler-90, but may not be the only planets in the system. Being so close to one another, additional planets could mess with the stability of the system, but there are orbits where additional stable planets could exist. So far, there aren't any additional promising candidates, but that doesn't mean none exist. And clearly, Kepler-90 still has a ton of unanswered questions. Despite being the only star other than the Sun known to have eight planets, we know next to nothing about any of them, which is why it was difficult to make a grand tour of the system. We only know the masses of two of the eight planets, and we know that one is a puffball for some reason. But until we know more about the system, that's where I'll end this video. Hopefully we can learn more about this system soon, so we can actually start learning about the environments of these planets. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space exploration.